Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphany. Now, yesterday we covered an article about Swift, uh, and there was a company in there named Symbiont that has built a gateway that Swift was using that is uh, on RippleNet, right? So there was a little connection there. Very exciting, and, that, and it still is. So I'm going to give a little update. This is an article from March the 8th, March the 8th. 2023 about Symbiont, right? I had a lot of, com I had a few comments in the comment section, so we have to cover this again and give you uh, proof. Symbiont is still in business. They're still operating. They're still doing the same thing that they were before. Their personal or their business situation has absolutely nothing to do with them having a functional blockchain that Vanguard is still using and Swift was still using as of January. So I'm gonna assume that they may still be using it since they were using it in January based on invoices. So this is from Ledger Insights. The article is dated March the 8th, 2023. All right. And uh, just yeah, give you these little tidbits here and you can read the article on your own. I have it posted in my community section so you can click on that link and read it yourself. Download it, screenshot it. OK, it says here a little tidbits it says Symbiont developed a blockchain platform for index data that Vanguard you know, the big company, one of two massive companies, Vanguard and BlackRock own almost everything. So Vanguard, okay. Symbiont developed a blockchain platform for index data that Vanguard has been using for years, has been using, which means they still are, right? As of this article from March the 8th, I wanna, I wanna keep make that clear. That this is current, okay? <laughs> Says here, next little piece. So Symbiont had a single secured creditor, uh, LM Funding, LM Funding, to whom it owed 2.3 million. So LM Funding is now in the driver's seat. So LM Funding is controlling everything now. All right. So they're still working. They're still functional. We'll get to why in a moment. Don't worry. We're going to get there. So now we have this little piece here. It says, meanwhile, Symbiont was still working on projects with invoices raised to Swift and State Street and State Street. I don't care about State Street. It says and State Street in January, in January, post the start of chapter 11. Now, when a lot of people hear about uh, bankruptcy, they automatically think a company has gone out of business, they're finished, they can't operate, but people fail to realize sometimes, sometimes, um, that there's different types of bankruptcy. So what they want, what they fought was chapter 11 bankruptcy, which does not stop you from functioning or working. It's chapter 11 is known as a reorganization bankruptcy. Okay. So they have to reorganize. Um, and actually you can borrow more money and I'm gonna put a little post on the screen somewhere so you can read it for yourself, but you can actually borrow more money if the judge gives you permission. So you keep functioning, you keep working, and you can borrow money if the judge gives you permission. You just have to reorganize, right? And so, I mean, what's important to me is there's still a functioning blockchain, which they report that as well. Let's scroll down here. I wanna just, just bear with me one moment, please. So in this portion, it says here, potential acquirers are exploring buying assets of enterprise blockchain firms, Marco Polo and Symbiont, which both still have operational blockchain platforms. That's all I need to know. OK, so we have confirmed through this article on Ledger Insights that Symbiont is still operational. As of January, they were still working with uh, Swift. We'll, we'll wait on the update on that. LM Funding has taken over and they're in the driver's seat controlling everything at Symbiont. Vanguard has been using them for year, has, which means they, they're still using them. And that's the, that's the update on Symbiont as of now. Now, it's hard to find articles like this because they get buried when you're doing a search. All the articles that pop up when you do just a basic search, it just talks about, chat, it just talks about bankruptcy and they make it sound terrible. They really do. They make it sound like it's over, but you have to understand, uh, you know, and maybe you don't have to understand. I'm just putting my thoughts out there, right? In all humility, I'm just putting my thoughts out there. But article writers, if they make it more dramatic, 
then people will read, they'll share it. Oh, this is bad news. People share that kind of news more, so they make it sound much more dramatic than what it is. But at the end of the day, it's just business. And they're still here. They're still functional. Uh, you know, That's what's important in my humble opinion. So they still have that connection to Swift as of January this year. And that's all that matters to me, is that we still have the possibility of an offering that's working with Swift that allows Swift to get a taste of Ripple. If they get a taste of one Ripple offering, they like it, they may use more. They don't have to use it through this company. The point that I was trying to make is just that Swift has sort of bent, bended the knee to use something from Ripple. And if they like this, they may like everything else. Maybe they like on-demand liquidity. Maybe they congeal with us. Maybe they use other offerings. They have already bent the knee, right? So that was what was important in my humble opinion is to show that there is a connection that Swift is willing to work with something that is associated with Ripple. It's a light connection, but it's still powerful. It shows that there's possibility, right? All right, so now <laughs> let's move on to another article here. Let's go into a little bit of Volante tech news. I hope that brought some clarity to the situation, all right? Um, you have to understand also, like a lot of times um, I, I have to cut the videos a little short. So you'll see like there's you can you can see where there's jumps in the video where I, I glue two pieces together. Uh, so I don't get to include all information all the time. Now, um, it saves some time. Some of my videos go like 40, 40 minutes, 35 minutes. That's after I've chopped them up. So I don't get to put everything in there. Sometimes I don't think that that's necessary. Uh, you know, the, the channel here is filled with researchers. Right. Most of my subscribers are deep researchers. I, we communicate all the time. Uh, some of them do more research than I do. So I always uh, have a keep in mind that they may know a lot of information already. So then I can just put certain superficial information out there. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that they understand or they, they have uh, enough information to uh, a depth of information. So now let's continue on to a little news here from Volante Technologies. It says here, the emphasis will be on uh, further leverage of the new payment rails, such as Zelle, FedNow, or RTP. Look, Zelle has so many problems, you know, people sending uh, money to other addresses. Then once you send the money to another address, the wrong address, you don't get your money back. A lot of people are dissatisfied with that. There were some issues over the summer. They couldn't tell, uh, uh, not summer, uh, I think it was last winter, actually. My apologies. You can look that up for yourself. But we did cover the article, so you, a lot of people got to see it themselves. But Zelle and Bank of America had some particular issues. At the time, nobody was able to provide clarity on why certain monies were missing. And there was a blame game sort of going back and forth between the two companies. So people have a bad taste in their mouth from Zelle. I think that that, only, that will only grow in the future. That bodes well for the new financial system where you can see for yourself where certain monies went and you can take certain actions, okay? Fed now, we know that there are certain issues with Fed now, but we'll cover that another time. We've gone in depth on that, right? Uh, and it's highly limited. Keep that in mind. They don't have the corridors that we have. So uh, um, they're definitely either going to have to congeal with the new financial system. I think that that's going to happen. I mean, you look at the connections that Ripple has with the federal government. We all know about that federal, uh, uh, the, the, um, the, the task force that they're on, the Fed payment task force, whatever that is, faster payments task force. Sorry about that. And then you have the Faster Payments Council. They have all of these different connections. Um, XLM has connections as well. I mean, we just covered an article where the White House was reaching out to them uh, for advice. I mean, that's that's a lot of power. They could have reached out to anybody. They reached out to Stellar. So that's a lot of power to have. Keep that in mind, right? Hopefully everybody is screenshotting all this information from these different videos I'm putting out. Go to those articles, download them, screenshot them, keep them in your files, okay? Um, I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but you know, you'll have the information later should you need it uh, as a reference. So uh, in real time payments, same thing with FedNow. It's highly limited. The rest of the world is not going to want to use FedNow or interact with it in, a, in I think, in a short period of time. I really do. Uh, RTP, same thing. The West is going to, it has isolated itself already, already, right? Um, so they're going to need an agnostic bridge currencies, an agnostic system to congeal everything together. Um, fortunately, these different countries in the world have to still interact with each other. There's a lot of capital, a lot of trade going on, um, a lot of loans. I mean, there's 
they really do need each other, although they act like they do not. So they're going to need a system to bring everything together and keep it fair across the board in what is becoming a multipolar world, right? So then let's move on here. So that's why I think about that. You know, the, the new financial system, you can't get around it. And it's going to be an explosive thing, but that's just my humble opinion, all right? So now let's move on here. This article is from beingcrypto.com and it's titled, X Coinbase CTO claims US dollar is no longer too big to fail. Then he touts Bitcoin, of course. Um, but I, I, I do agree with, I won't say it's, it's not too big to fail now, but it won't be too big to fail later. I will, I will lean more towards that. Uh, it's getting to that point. It says, Srini Vasan pointed out that unlike in the past when investors have flocked to dollar denominated assets during the time of stress, this is a different time. He noted that historical data shows that people exit devaluing currencies, which is where USD falls into. Dalio, quote, Dalio has a different definition of historical reserve currencies. He says it's the US dollar, then before that, the British pound, then before that, the Dutch gilder. But the point remains that reserve currency status doesn't last. Uh, I agree with that, end quote. So then he says here, he noted that this difference between 2008 and 2023 uh, as USD no longer held its strong position. Balaji also suggested that the Chinese RMB could even replace the USD as the world reserve currency. Um, I could see that happening. We'll, we'll just stay privy to what's going on in the world right now. We do know that certain countries are now uh, transacting in, in Chinese Yuan, Renminbi, uh, I believe when they're uh, interacting or trading with oil, right? They're, they're paying in Chinese Yuan, Renminbi. Uh, so already you're starting to see signs of that, but we'll see. I don't think that, I think it'll be a new digital asset that will run everything. I don't think it's going to be something traditional to be quite honest, but we will, we will see. Um, so it says here, this continues in his earlier views. Okay, so <laughs> then they get into Bitcoin. Let's read just this little bit here about the US dollar weakening. That's gonna affect everything as people retreat to what they believe is safe, which puts the bank coins in a good position as they're able to scrape up capital from all around the world if it ever comes to that. Um, creating liquidity pools, being able to send that money back and forth with ease. Um, so let's continue here. It says, while not everyone believes Bitcoin will replace USD, there are clear signs that the US dollar is weakening against other cryptocurrencies. The US dollar index is down 8.9%. In the last six months, it has lost 1.34% of its value in the past year. All right, so now let's move on to another article here. If you want to read the rest of that, it's from beingcrypto.com. They're doing a great job over there, all right? So now, let's move on to more. A lot of things are happening. The world is changing rapidly. I've never seen such a diverse amount of information uh, moving forward. I mean, every day there's developments moving forward at this pace. So this is from CryptoDaily.co.uk, and it's titled, UAE unveiled its CBDC strategy for the digital Durham. United Arab Emirates continues to steam forward with the, with the new financial system. Ripple is deep in there. Hedera is very deep in there. We know Quant is deep in there now as they're setting up and they have one of their members as the head of infrastructure in the United Arab Emirates, head of uh, digital infrastructure, right? Um, so the bank coins are in heavy, are heavy op in operation in the UAE, at least the setup of everything. We'll see how that works out. Uh, we're always adjustable. We try to stay wise here. We're always learning here and we adjust our, our thinking accordingly, all right? UAE announced this week that it expects to, to complete the first phase of its CBDC strategy by mid-2024. The United Arab Emirates announced on Thursday that it expects to complete the first phase of its central bank digital currency, the digital Durham, by mid-2024. Now we have a date to put on our, put on our calendars, mid-2024, all right? So the strategy includes a proof of concept work for a wholesale XRP, Hedera, wholesale, uh, wholesale and retail CBDC. Algorand is deep in, Algorand can run that retail CBDC. We'll see how it works out, all right? And retail CBDC, the central bank of the UAE revealed in the announcement a collaboration with G42 Cloud, a cloud storage platform 
in the region in R3, a New York-based blockchain firm. See, this is interesting. They always they like to put these popular companies out front, but it doesn't make sense in my opinion, or at least it's not fair. Something suspicious about that. We've read a ton of articles about the business that Hedera is doing in the United Arab, Arab Emirates, but they never reference Hedera. Why? It's like they don't want people to know this. We know from all the different articles about Ripple, uh, all over the main region, multiple multiples of banks over there, but we never hear about it. We have to research that ourselves and dig it up ourselves. It's like hidden information. Um, I don't know. It's suspicious, in my humble opinion. It says, according to the announcement, the digital Durham's first phase will be completed in the next 12 to 15 months and comprises three central pillars. The first pillar is a soft launch of Embridge, an ongoing collaboration between the BIS and the central banks of Thailand, Hong Kong, the UAE, and the Chinese mainland. Embridge, we, we know all about Embridge. Let's scroll down here, see if there's any more. It says the second of the three pillars is a proof of concept work for a bilateral CBDC bridge with India. Who's deep in India? Algorand is deep in India. And not, and not just when it comes to just moving capital, but remember, uh, what was the company that's, that's building the medical offering on Algorand? Was it MaPay? M-A? Was it MAPay? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. But there's a medical uh, uh, company that's building a medical offering on Algorand that has gone over to India. And that's the last we heard that they were going to be setting up infrastructures, trying to bring in partnerships. And I'm waiting to hear an update on that. Right. It was a company that was out of New Jersey. OK, uh, so their Algorand is deep in India. That's the point of what I'm trying to convey there. So um, we're going to leave that there. This is from, once again, CryptoDaily.co.uk, in case you want to read the entire article yourself. All right. So now let's move on here. So then we have this article here from CoinEdition.com, and it's titled, The U.S. Wants to Block the Exits Before Digital, Digital Dollar Devaluation. So this is similar to the other article there. It says, reports have emerged that U.S. officials, including Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC has been lobbying their UK and Canadian counterparts to tighten restrictions on the crypto industry. I, I read a little bit about this the other day. Uh, Balaji, a former chief technology officer at Coinbase Crypto Exchange, describes the action as an attempt to, quote, block the exits before the digital devaluation of the dollar. According to Eleanor Terrett, a Fox Business journalist, uh, the U.S. is persuading other countries to follow in their footsteps and clamp down on cryptocurrencies. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of entities have been asking countries to clamp down on crypto. IMF have been doing that for the longest time. Um, Tarrant noted that the U.K.'s Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, is reportedly preparing to announce tighter restrictions on the cryptocurrency industry in the coming weeks. We'll see if that actually happens, if that actually manifests. Nonetheless, reports suggest that Canada's crackdown on crypto industry is already underway with restrictions on the amount of crypto assets individuals can purchase from exchanges. That's crazy. If you're trying to restrict my freedom and what I can do, I'm going to have to leave. Simple as that. I, I, no, there's no way, no way I'm going to allow anyone to tell me what to do. I can't. I can't. I'm long in the tooth, folks. I'm long in the tooth. I'm older. Um, no way. There's no way I'm allowing that. I just, I don't even like to read that. You know, these people worked hard for their money. They should be able to do whatever they want with their funds. That's how I feel. As long as it's not illegal, they should be able to do whatever they want with their funds. So now uh, a gov entity is going to tell you how to spend your money. Oh, that's good. This is not good. You can do this. You can't do that. Come on. That, that's I don't know. Hey, I'll leave it at that. According to a reply a tweet to Tarek, Canadians can only buy more than. It says can only buy more than 30,000 a year of specific cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum from exchanges more than it says Canada already has restrictions of only being able to buy more than 30,000 a year. That's not ETH, BTC and like two others from exchanges. I need more clarity on that. If, if anybody from Canada is a subscriber and you're, you're watching this, please just give me clarity down below. Um, on what's going on with that. I don't know if that was written the way that it should have been or that they're, or, or, to convey the message that they're trying to, to put out there. So, but anyway, yeah, no matter what, they shouldn't be telling people what to do with their money. You work too hard, life is hard, 
Let the people do what they please as long as it's not bad or illegal. Simple as that. So then we have a little bit of stellar news here. Just a little little wee bit of stellar news here. This is from MoneyGram. says, congrats to at refugees for being named uh, winner, winner of at Paris Block Week's quote, best impact blockchain project award. This is good because it brings more attention to Stellar. And people are going to ask, hey, uh, what was that that winning project built on? Oh, it was built on Stellar. Maybe they want to build on Stellar now. Maybe they have a conversation with uh, this best impact blockchain project award winner. And they say, hey, you know, it was very easy to build on Stellar. It was they were very good to work with at the Stellar Stellar Foundation. And then it brings in some more business. So I think these are very, very good things when we have bank coin blockchains and offerings built on them that win awards. Great advertisement. Great way to bring in more people to want to build on the chain. Then it says here through a blockchain powered aid disbursement system in partnership with MoneyGram at Circle and at Stellar. UNHCR is successfully getting aid to Ukrainians who need it. Always keep in mind those connections, Circle, Stellar, MoneyGram, but Circle and, and Coinbase, Circle has that attachment, that uh, connection to Coinbase. Coinbase has an attachment to who? BlackRock. BlackRock is very powerful. BlackRock and Vanguard are like, right? they're right there as the most powerful organizations in the world. They own almost everything, right? Um, but that was another thing about Symbion. They continue to work with Vanguard, with Vanguard. Um, when you have powerful entities like that, that are backing you and using your services currently, I just don't see you going away. Like somebody's going to buy you. You're going to continue to run. There's a lot of money flowing around and rules get bent for you as well. Like, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> and if Vanguard has been using them for years, according to this article that we were reading earlier, then obviously they're satisfied and didn't want to change. They're satisfied with the blockchain. That's important, right? All right. So everything is looking good. All right. Just wanted to drop a little quick video on you today and uh, we'll get back to regular business tomorrow. Hope you're all doing good out there. All right. Having a good Saturday. Appreciate every single one of you. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.